during that extended time period. This is the second time I've attended a borough council hearing. My first visit was back in 1998 in regard to a traffic issue that we had in our neighborhood, uh, which was satisfactorily resolved by council, to your credit, <laughs> pursuant to the installation of some stop signs. Since that time, uh, I've essentially deferred to what I believe to be a council comprised of reasonable individuals who make sound decisions, uh, not out of apathy or disinterest, but generally just out of respect that you are competent and able to do your jobs. Until this Chief Hockenberry incident has come to the fore uh, seven weeks ago, which by any estimation is a very serious problem. And alarms me to the extent that here I am on a Tuesday evening when there are many other things I could be doing. Uh, I guess at the outset I'd like to ask a question. Has there been any resolution or any determination made regarding uh, Doug Hockenberry's employment status with the borough? I'm not prefacing the uh, opening my remarks. This is not a debate. We will not answer questions. We will not deny standing for debate. We will take the comments under consideration, but this is not a question and answer. Period. So you, you, you won't answer the question about mm -hmm. resolution of the issue, because if there were a disposition, obviously that would obviate any further comments I might have regarding the matter. So, receiving no response, then I'll assume that the matter still is pending. Uh, here again, the 19th of December, what, over seven weeks since it occurred. Uh, this, is, this is an inordinate delay, I submit, in view of the very serious intentional criminal conduct of Mr. Hockenberry. And the delay itself, I believe, leads to some clear inferences and conclusions regarding the present disposition of counsel, which are troubling to me, and again, explain my appearance tonight. Uh, again, I would ask a question which will probably be greeted with the same response. Mr. Roblin, has there been any type of internal investigation in regard to the very apparent issue of uh, Mr. Hockenberry's abuse of alcohol? As I previously stated, we will not be answering questions. All right. You know, the, the facts of this matter are well known. The, uh, I think your time is up, sir. Well, in any event, we have a, we have a situation here where the resolution will certainly affect the reputation not only of the police department, but the borough itself. Uh, Your time is up, sir. Thank you. Very well. The issue comes down to one of whether you allow Mr. Huckabee to remain, you'll essentially be casting to the wind uh, an individual who is a chief law enforcement officer, yet is not, is not a law-abiding individual. Your comments are heard, sir. Thank you. My name is Louise Schuster. I live at 1807 Walnut Street. I want to express my concern about the recent charge of DUI brought against Camp Hill Borough Police Chief Hockenberry. I firmly believe he should be terminated from his position. My family moved to Camp Hill in 1965, and I'm a 1973 graduate of Camp Hill High School. I moved away in 1980, and returned in 2000 upon the death of my father. My daughter's a 2013 graduate of Camp Hill High School and Chief Hockenberry conducted the D.A.R.E. program while she was in school. She's amazed the chief may not be terminated from his position. I understand that some Camp Hill residents believe that the DUI arrest was just a mistake and we should forget about it. However, Chief Hockenberry is indeed the chief of police and as such should be setting an example for the officers in his charge and should be held to a higher standard of conduct than your normal everyday citizen. <coughs> Additionally, it's not just the DUI, it was reported that he called a towing company to come and tow his car to hide his misconduct. Will non-auction by the borough come into play in any future court cases involving individuals charged with DUI by the Camp Hill Police? Underage drinking has been a problem in Camp Hill for years, and it was a problem when I was in school in the early 70s. What type of message would you be sending the youth of Camp Hill if no action is taken against Chief Hockenberry for his DUI and attempting to leave the scene of an accident? The answer is simple, the wrong answer, the wrong message. I may be moving in the next year or two out of Camp Hill. I'm concerned about what message retaining Chief Hockenberry will give to prospective buyers. Will someone want to move into a borough that sanctions this type of misconduct by the Chief of Police? As you're aware, people will Google prospective new housing locations and the DUI is going to show up at the top of the internet search. 
I was in Lock Haven on business in late November, and when I opened the local paper, there was an article on page four about the arrest of the Camp Hill police chief. I understand this is a hard decision to make, as, if he's, as he's been a part of the police force for years. However, as borough council members, you're charged with making the right decisions, regardless of your personal <coughs> relationship with the chief. Thank you. Many of you already know me, I'm Rick Woodard. I was on the Borough Council for four years. Um, as I view uh, Doug Hockenberry's uh, situation, uh, after being on council with Doug, I, um, I think that when somebody makes a mistake, which we all do, um, that that person needs to get some sense of forgiveness. And uh, I think he, as, a, as the chief of the borough, as uh, chief of the police, has done an outstanding job. And um, I think I would encourage the borough council to take that into consideration when they're deciding what they should do. Because I do think he, he deserves our support. Um, I think that we should try to keep him on the, uh, as chief of police. And uh, I would encourage the, the um, the board to take the action that would allow him, because we've all made mistakes. And, um, you know, I'd love to be able to tell you that I haven't had any mistakes, but that's not true. And I wouldn't, I, knowing most of you, I would, I would assume that that's the case with most of us, too. So um, I would encourage you that uh, for, to do whatever you can <coughs> to keep the chief um, as, a, as, uh, as head of the police department. Thank you very much. Good to see you again, Peter. Good afternoon, members of the council. Dave Buell, 441 Parkside Road. Um, like Mr. Woodard, I served with uh, Chief Hockenberry for eight years, or six, six, two terms on the borough council. Um, before he was chief, I was here the night he was installed as chief, and I, I spoke about the uh, relationship that we had. I've seen him do in the community and the things that I'd seen him do for us, me as a resident personally. <coughs> Obviously, the, the uh, circumstances are severe, and I don't, um, I don't envy your decision today because obviously difficult circumstances warrant difficult decisions. Um, but I was here the day he was sworn in as officer. I served with him. And um, I can speak outside of this instance of the character that I've seen him portray, um, the uh, sensitivity, grace, and um, professionalism that I've seen him with uh, residents in the borough and with situations that I was, uh, had to see uh, uh, personally. And so, again, like Mr. Roblin, I would like you to take in consideration his whole body of work, although, like I say, um, no one can condone severe actions, um, I would I want to speak in his behalf to portray the other side of the, the whole body of work that I've seen him portray. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Hi, um, Brett Miller, 848 Wynwood Road. Um, I think that Doug's statement to the media about taking full responsibility was great. Um, I wish he had taken that a step further and truly taken responsibility and resigned instead of putting that responsibility on all of you and all of the community to be forced to come up and state their case one way or another. I think that would have shown true integrity on his part, um, but that was lost the moment he decided to get behind the wheel drunk. And I don't think that um, you're sending a good message by retaining him, and that I think that the, um, the best thing for our community would be to, um, you know, dismiss him. And I, I wonder if you all, I do have a couple questions, have you all asked him to resign um, <coughs> for the sake of the community? I mean, it, it's costing us <coughs> in numerous ways. 
Um, he's paid a lot of money for the service that he has provided over the last several years. Um, and have you all viewed the dash cam footage of that evening of his arrest? And the affidavit speaks for itself. Um, I can't imagine what the dash cam footage shows. And you would think somebody who had integrity would take responsibility and that information will become public. So, you know, he could have done us all a favor and, and all of you a favor because you're forced to make this decision. But I hope you do make the right one. And thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, Esteban Diaz, 2014, Harvard, and uh, I was here last week, so I spoke my piece, so I'll keep it really, really short. Uh, I don't envy the position you're in. Uh, you've got a very tough decision, uh, but like I said, I'm as much a member of the community as all of you here, okay? Uh, so whatever decision you make, I, I will entrust you with that. The only thing I want to leave you with is, is, from my standpoint, again, I don't know the chief. I heard great things last week about that. You do have to consider the great body of work. I understand that. However, and I'll tell you from my perspective, in my previous career, a DUI was a career ender. You were out the door. And I think there's some expectations of a police chief. I also think there's a big difference between a mistake, willful intent, and a lapse of judgment. So when we take a look at, again, the affidavit, DUI over twice the, the limit, and then not reporting the accident and trying to get the vehicle towed away, is that a mistake or is that willful intent? Now my concern is this is the police chief that's going to have the authority to detain me. I, I sort of have a loss of confidence at this point. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you all of you uh, and tough decision. Good evening. My name is Richard Gavin. I live on Dartmouth Street. And in regard to Chief Hockenberry, um, I keep hearing the word mistake. Uh, if I get up in the morning and get in my car and the battery doesn't, doesn't start because of the battery and I realize I left my light on inside the car, that's a mistake. This was a willful choice. You know, I, I partake of drinking every now and then also, but I know, I know better not to get behind a wheel when I drink too much. Evidently, he made a decision to do that. It was a decision, not a mistake. It was a choice he made. He could have called Uber, he could have called a friend, could have called a taxi, he could have done whatever it take to get home, but he chose to get behind the wheel. And then also, after he has the accident, he has the mind, even though he was double the limit, over double the limit, he had the mind to call a towing company instead of the police. If he had any integrity, he would have called the police and say, I just have to take what I have coming to me. But he didn't. He made the choice to call a towing company. Therefore, you know, if he's reinstated, there'd be, there would be definitely a loss of confidence in the police department. So that's just the way I feel about it. Thank you. Hello, um, Betsy Gaynor, 424 North 25th Street. I'm speaking tonight in support of retaining Chief Hockenberry. I've known and interacted with Chief Hockenberry since shortly after he moved here in 1999. I have called upon him to assist me with various volunteer activities I've been involved in over the years, as well as to discuss issues pertaining to safety in our community, <coughs> and unfortunately, to deal with both of my teenage sons when they didn't always make great choices. No matter the reason for my call to Chief Hockenberry, he was always professional, responsive, <coughs> fair, helpful, and supportive. He has been a strong presence in our community and someone that I believe truly cares about our community, members, especially the teenagers. There are no perfect people in this world. We will all make mistakes. It is just a matter of time. Yes, this was a big mistake. However, I believe by retaining Chief Hockenberry, you'll allow him to make it right again. Everyone deserves a second chance, even the Chief of Police. His 21 years of dedicated and professional service to our community and residents warrants a second chance. Thank you. Cindy Howe, I live at um, 102 Ransom Road. 
Um, I don't know Chief Hockenberry. I've not been, had any interaction with the Camp Hill Police. I've been here 14 years and I'm very thankful for that. Um, but I do have a strong background um, as a professional nurse. Um, I've done a lot of risk management work and I think one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is what's the standard of practice here? Um, it may not be written in his job responsibilities. It may not be written that uh, if you're t uh, accused of it and found guilty of a DUI that you're terminated, but um, there's a lot of understood in certain specific roles. And I doubt that if we looked around the state that it's understood in any borough that it's acceptable for the chief of police to be convicted of a DUI and to make the choices that he made. I've heard very positive things about him in these last two meetings. I'm not saying he, that maybe he doesn't deserve a second chance, but I don't think he deserves to be the chief of police and the image that that would project. I don't know if a consideration would be to keep him on as a police officer for Camp Hill and let him go back to the system mm -hmm. and perhaps regain that role at a later date. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steve Carl. I live at 2818 Rathden Road. I'm gonna make this message very clear and very simple and brief. Uh, Chief Hockenberry has gained my confidence. He hasn't lost that confidence. I support Chief Hockenberry. I also support a significant reprimand for Chief Hockenberry, but I still support him to continue to be a servant of our community and I will back him uh, in that capacity. Thank you. Steve Morelli, 1710 Market Street. Uh, the last time I spoke to you was about pedestrian safety on the uh, bypass. And during my remarks, I had mentioned that I, I cross a bypass at, seven, at 21st Street, which is technically prohibited. And the, uh, the chief said that he would cite me if he caught me. And after the meeting, he told me that he didn't want to uh, attend a scene of a fatal accident where a pedestrian was killed by a drunken driver. And as he described this accident, there were tears in his eyes. Now this accident he described was a year ago tomorrow. So <coughs> I, I drew two things from this. One is that I don't think he would have had a lot of leniency for me crossing a street. I don't think he would have had a lot of leniency for a drunken driver. And he knew full well the impact and the risk he took <coughs> when he got behind that wheel. He, he knew that intimately. I just wanted to remind you of that. My name is Becca Robertson. I live at 2101 Mayford Lane. Um, I'm a recent Camp Hill graduate. I graduated in 2014. I've been going to college at the University of Delaware ever since. And when I was going through grade school, um, Chief Hockenberry was the person who taught us all about DARE, which was about drug and alcohol abuse. And I know you might think that I'm going to say that he should be punished fully because he would know better. But the thing is that we all make mistakes. And I remember everything that he taught me ever since I was in middle school and high school. And it's because he made it personable, he made it relatable, and he understood the importance of our future generation arming them with this knowledge. Um, and I think it's really important to understand that and not take for granted what we have with 
Chief Hockenberry because I'm in college now. I've had to call the police four or five different times for theft, um, for break-ins, for multiple times of um, basically harassment and abuse, and the police have never even showed up. I don't feel safe where I am. But when I lived in Camp Hill, I knew I was safe because any time we had to pick up the phone and call the police, Chief Hockenberry was there on the spot, no questions asked. And he was forgiving, you know? Maybe the situation was caused by you, but if you had never made an offense before, he understood that people make mistakes. And I think that we need to take that in consideration when we're <coughs> dealing with this issue with Chief Hockenberry. I think there should be repercussions, but I do not think that we should lose Chief Hockenberry. He is an asset to our community and he has been for the past 21 years. Thank you. Uh, Molly Robertson, 2101 Mayford Lane. That is my daughter. I have another one similar. <laughs> uh, I too am in support of Chief Hockenberry and um, I credit him and thank him for all he has done for our community and my children and nobody is perfect but it would be a crying shame to lose an asset such as him to this community. Thank you. I'd have to stand on my tiptoes. <laughs> my name is Becky Haynes. I was a longtime resident of Camp Hill. I do still volunteer in the community, spend money in the community, and work in the community. And I just want to share a, a, a personal outlook on this. I had a very troubled, troubled son. And Doug Hockenberry went above and beyond to try to help my son. And when I lost my son, I became very troubled, and he went above and beyond to save me, literally saving my life at one point. We all make bad choices, and we all make mistakes. This is a phenomenal, professional police chief who made a very bad decision. I believe, yes, he should be sanctioned in some way. But I think if we let him leave the police force, you're losing a valuable asset. Thank you. My name is Stu Hardy. I have lived in Camp Hill since 1989. My address is 2700 Market Street. And I'm serving as the chaplain to the Camp Hill Police Department. For 21 years, I was senior pastor at Trinity Lutheran <coughs> Church. So let me first say, ladies and gentlemen, that I respect you and the wisdom you have and the courage you have to make the right decisions. I'd also remind you that if a police chief is doing a good job, he'll never have 100% support. There'll always be those who can second guess what he did, and there'll always be those who think he's absolutely flawless. But he's human, like the rest of us. Yes, he, he made a mistake, but he was under the influence of alcohol. Do you expect him? to be clear thinking when he's in that state? And whatever followed the accident, he was under the influence of alcohol. So why don't we give him some leniency there? The other thing is, what you can do for a person here is show him mercy and compassion. If you do that, you provide us with a person who's had an opportunity to become a new man and to go to students at the schools and talk to us about driving under the influence and his own regretful, shameful, disappointing behavior. For this man has not only been punished by the court, he's punishing himself. He's a broken man, feeling as though he, he has 
uh, destroyed not only himself but you and your confidence and his confidence in himself. So here's an opportunity. You can turn a tragic situation into something that's really powerful and speaks volumes or you can just let the whole thing go. I would be deeply disappointed if Doug Hockenberry was not the chief of police <coughs> tomorrow. Thank you. My name is Nick Foster. Uh, I don't envy any of your, your decisions. 50 years ago, you wouldn't have this decision. Cops would have never been arrested 50 years ago for DUI or much of anything. Times have changed a lot to the point where the best commissioner the state police ever had was arrested for DUI, where the attorney general was arrested for DUI. It's a horrible crime. It needs to be punished. It should not be career ending in this case, my thing. I've been in law enforcement for 41 years. I've arrested over 1,000 people for DUI. I've had a nephew that was killed when he was eight years old. There's nobody in this room more against DUI than I, than I am. But if anybody here, including me, has never sinned, I cast him aside. I don't know the man at all, only by reputation. I know he's going to have to bear the burden of this forever. And as the uh, one person said, let him go out, be an example. You know, I don't know if he should be the chief, but it sounds like you got yourself a darn good cop. And I say, uh, he needs sanction, of course. The courts are going to do that, and you folks are going to go do it too. But to, uh, yeah, it's a mistake. And after you have that second, third, whatever beer, you make mistakes because you become stupid. And he became stupid. And is that a reason for him to have to have go through all this and be punished in my two minutes are over and I'm glad. <laughs> My name is Jeff Kozlowski. I live at 426 Parkside Road. <coughs> I'm a fourth grade student at Eisenhower Elementary School. I would like to talk to you about one of the things we learn at school is lion pride. It stands for positive attitude, <coughs> respect, integrity, diversity, and excellence. We, we are encouraged to show these qualities every day, no matter where we are. I think the, the most important qualities are integrity, respect, and excellence. They make, they all work together to make us better people <laughs> and to make our family, school, and community better. <coughs> I was surprised to hear about what our chief of police did. I think that he is supposed to be someone that we look up to, and I think that even though he made a bad choice, it did not show integrity when he tried to hide it. That was not showing respect to himself and the rest of us. <coughs> it is important that for uh, it is important for us kids to and for our town to have people in charge who show excellence. I am asking all of you to make good choices and show law and pride. I know that we all make mistakes and should be forgiven, but th that doesn't mean that there that there aren't consequences for what we do. It's okay for someone to make a bad choice, but it's not okay to, tr to try to get away with it. You are all role models and responsible to show that Camp Hill is a town where we all show line pride. Do I get my own two minutes in addition to his? Thank you. 
Um, I'm Mary Bellarby. I'm his mother also at 426 Parkside Road. Spoke with you guys uh, last week regarding this incident. Um, I was going to arrive here holding two six packs to drive the point home that our chief of police made a choice. Um, I appreciate what everyone says about forgiveness, about what a great person he is. I'm not arguing that. I don't think many people in this room could argue that. I'm speaking again as a parent. I'm speaking in regards to the message that it's sending our children. I'm speaking in regards to statistics. Two six packs, 12 drinks. I don't think there's a single person in this room who could down that, get in a car, and drive it responsibly. That's the choice that was made. And I, as a parent, am not okay knowing that that's what we have representing our town. Good evening, I'm Jackie McGarrow at 3416 Bedford Drive. I've been a 31 year resident of Camp Hill, raised three children, three daughters, 19, 23, and 31. And Doug Hockenberry has known all of my children, not because they've been in trouble with the law, but because he has interacted with our children, with the adults in the community. I see three very familiar faces up here this evening. Our children went to school together. You know what I'm talking about. I believe under our Constitution, we are all afforded equal opportunity. And for Chief Hockenberry to help be held to a higher standard than the next person that's eligible for ARD, I think it's wrong. I think we ought to support him for his years of service. I think he would certainly be under a fishbowl living in this small community. And he deserves that second chance that's afforded under our laws, unless, of course, there's something in the Human Resources Department here at Camp Hill that we're not aware of. But I give 100% behind supporting Doug Hockenberry and his ability to continue to be the awesome police chief he has for all of these years, watching all of our children grow up. Hi, Jamie Toygo, 2200 Dickinson Avenue. I am a supporter of Chief Hockenberry, and I know this has got to be extremely difficult for you to make a decision. However, it is not normal that we have a chief so involved in our community. And I can tell you having two teenage daughters in this system and coming from a different area, moving into this borough a few years ago, he is so connected and involved and wants to inspire our children and that's why we have such a unique community here in Camp Hill. He made a mistake. There's no doubt about that. Can he regain that respect from our community? Absolutely. I do believe 100% that he can. And I know this is not going to be an easy decision. However, I think the community has spoken tonight. And I think that the majority of people believe that he can regain that respect and he will 100% bring back and, and stand up for our community and be a better person. Thank you very much. My name is Alyssa Packer. I'm at 501 Arlington Road. I think I feel a little bit uncomfortable tonight with the applause in the room. I, I do think that we understand that about half the people here think that he's, he should retain his position as police chief and about half don't, but more importantly, I don't really think it's for us to decide. I think you're elected to, to decide, and I think you have access to information that we don't have access to. I don't think any of us in the room know the full extent of information you have access to, so I trust your decision to decide. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, that it's your right to decide, and I don't, I don't think it should be a popularity, <coughs> the decision should be decided based on popularity or votes. Um, I, first of all, I don't doubt, I don't know Chief Hockenberry, and I don't doubt that he is, his commitment to the community and his dedication to the community. However, I do think that the lack of judgment he showed does make him unfit to serve as police chief, in my opinion. 
I don't know that there's, that means there's not another role for him in our police department, but I think that the lack of, that he has lost the moral standing to serve in that role. My daughter sees someone smoking on the street and she is upset because she says they are going to die. Our children don't understand, especially our young kids, they don't understand gray. Um, now maybe as they get older and get into high school, they, they get a better feeling of that, but young kids don't get that. And so the message I think that it sends to our kids is that either this is okay to do or we can all make mistakes and get second chances. And frankly, we're not all as popular as Chief Hockenberry and we don't all get second chances when we make our mistakes. So for me, I, I feel like this has nothing to do with him personally. It honestly, I don't doubt that he is a wonderful servant to our community, but I do believe that he has lost the, the moral authority to serve as police chief to our community. Joan Benson, 1501 High Street. I disagree with that we, most of us don't get second chances. I think most of us in our life have had a second chance. It may be very personal, it might be connected with family and raising our kids, but we've all had second chances. Some people know about it, some people don't. Living in this community all these years with a police chief who is not aloof, who is communicating with the kids, going to the school, talking on the stage, the fact that he's the chief of police and everybody knows him and the kids know him and respect him is a big thing. I think in the long run, if you take so many years of service without any flaws and you put it up here and all the lives he's touched and all the really good things and you put it up here and then you take a bad thing, a bad mistake, where if we pick it apart and count the six packs and all that, it sounds so absolutely horrible, but it was just a mistake. And I think we all have made mistakes but not all of us have done for so many years so much good in a community and made everyone feel so safe and so secure and given the fact that you feel that you could communicate with the chief of police and be heard is a big thing. I sincerely hope that all these years of caring all these years of working so hard be balanced out with what we've all done made a mistake. And we've returned from executive session where we discussed matters of personnel and received advice from counsel. And at this time, I will entertain a motion to accept the resignation and approve a severance agreement and release between Chief of Police Doug Hockenberry and Camp Hill Borough, setting forth the terms on which Chief Hockenberry will separate from his employment as Chief of Police of Camp Hill Borough. Do I hear a motion to approve the recommendation? Certainly. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded to approve this, to accept the resignation and approve the severance agreement and release. Is there any discussion from members of council? Mr. President, I think we're making a huge mistake here. I think he should be uh, continued as chief, I believe, and agree with the people who spoke in favor of him. I think that he, uh, he is conscious of the community. It is, um, I think it's a, a mistake here. And I, I, uh, I will obviously accept Thank you. Further discussion? Yeah, I, I share that view very strongly. I have great respect for professional service. And 
excellence in the outcomes. And after hearing tonight what we heard and hearing over the last seven weeks what I've heard, I believe there's a strong argument in each direction and I am very sad about this result. Can I call the question? Is this a roll call? No, Party. Just a motion. No, just okay. I, would ask, I would ask that we do a roll call, please. Okay. Okay. Brody? Aye. Schultz? Aye. Bernie? Aye. Roblin? Aye. Snells are come? Aye. Twyford? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Okay. The motion has been seconded and approved by a majority of council. And I just have a couple of quick comments to make as a result of passage of this motion. Um, as a result of this, I'm going to direct legal counsel to see that the agreement is executed and returned to counsel. And further, uh, in the interim, uh, Mayor Mark Simpson, who has statutory control over the day-to-day -day operations of the police department, will continue to work with the experienced ranking officers to administer the department. <laughs>